What is going on everybody? How are we all doing? And welcome back to the top 24 players on FIFA 17. Today we are actually on to the penultimate episode of this mini-series. We're entering the top 10 game from 9 to 5. And once again, I've got to say a massive thank you for the support on the last video. It's been absolutely incredible, the support on this series as a whole. If you have missed any of the episodes, there'll be a little link in the little information bar up here. Click on that, it'll take you to the playlist so you can see all of the player predictions up to this point. But um, without any further ado, of course as well, by the way, don't forget to check out Bill City, by the way. His links are down below. He's the guy that's done all the uh, concept players. But um, without any further ado... Let's get stuck into the top 10. So we started things off, lads, with a bit of a mover. Now, this is a player that... This is debatable. I was torn between giving him an 88 or an 89. And you'll see what I've given him in a second. It's Diego Godin had an absolutely phenomenal couple of seasons with Atletico Madrid. He started out the year as an 85. He got an upgrade to an 86. He's got four informed cards, as well as that team of the season card as well, taking him all the way up to a 95. And I mentioned in the last episode or the episode before that Thiago Silva was technically the best centre-back in the world right now. I actually completely forgot about Diego Godin as I was saying that. But I just think he's been so outstanding and the amount of special cards he's picked up over the last couple of years, it's unreal. Which is why I have lent on the more generous side of things and given him an 89 rated card. Like I said, I was very torn between the 88 and the 89, but I thought why not give him the 89? He has been absolutely sensational for the past couple of seasons now. We're giving him 72 pace, 62 dribbling, 49 shooting, 65 passing, 92 defending and 83 physical. It's another one of, the loads, like, another one of those lads, sorry. Like all of these, let me know your opinions in the comment section down below. I'd be really interested to see how you fall on this. But debatable whether he's the best centre-back in the world. Like I said before, it's between him, Thiago Silva and Boating. All very, very close in my opinion. But um, we've gone ahead and given him the 89. Like I said, very tall between 89 and 88. And it's Diego Godin that's taking the ninth spot in our countdown. Coming in at number 8 is a player that's just sealed a massive, massive move to the Premier League. And that is, of course, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Just moved to Man United. Had another absolutely incredible, incredible year with PSG. And look at the special cards, lads. He started off the year as an 89. He didn't get himself an upgrade. But he's got, a, like, 7, no, sorry, 8 special cards. He's got a hero card, a few informs, a 3 man of the matches. His team of the season all the way up to a 98. And of course, he's also got that transfer card to Manchester United. And it's a very interesting one because usually when players get over 30, and Zlatan is well over 30 now, they do start to downgrade the players. But um, I don't think that's going to be the case. He's just had such a good season last year. I don't think they can justify downgrading him. And I don't think he'll get an upgrade either. Some people might say he deserves an upgrade to a 90. But I think he's going to stay exactly the same as the 89 rated striker. We have changed his stats a little bit. I've lowered his pace slightly. But I have improved his shooting a little bit to sort of balance that out. But I think he's going to stay as an 89 rated striker. 89 rated striker. He will be the highest rated striker in the Premier League without doubt in my opinion. And it's just going to be really, really interesting to see how he can do in the Premier League. He's a little bit older now of course. And the Premier League is a very fast paced league. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how we uh, adapt and cope to life in the BPL. But um... Moving on to number 7 now, it's another big mover, and we have got Luka Modric, who started out this year as an age 7 rated player. He has got his 88 rated inform, he's got a cut, he's got, sorry, he's got one uh, international man of the match card, and then he's got his team of the season, and a team of the year card as well. Now that team of the year card is big for me, because I think that means he has got to get an upgrade. I said this with Pogba as well, he upgraded Pogba a little bit. And we're going to be doing exactly the same with Luka Modric. We're taking him from an 87 up by 2 to an 89 rated central midfielder. It's another one. I was very torn between 88 and 89, but I honestly think he deserves the 89. He's been fantastic for Real Madrid over the past couple of seasons, considering when they very first signed him, he was voted something like the worst signing in La Liga history or something daft like that. He has been absolutely immense the last season and a half, the season and a half at the very least. And he was absolutely fantastic for Croatia in the Euros, in my opinion. The card that we're giving him, it would be amazing. We're looking at 77 pace, 90 dribbling, 77 shooting, 73 defending, 70 physical, and 87 passing. Coming in at number 7, Luka Modric. I really, really hope he gets the 89 rated card. Like I said, lads, I think he really does deserve it. Coming in at number 6 is a teammate of Luka Modric, and that is Gareth Bale. Again, similar situation where he started the year as an 87 rated right midfielder. He's got his striker, which is his, obviously his international position change card. He's picked up three informs. He's got a man of the match, an international man of the match, and a team of the tournament, taking him all the way up to a 94 rated card. 
And again, I just think he deserves the upgrade, lads. Very similar to Modric once again in the fact that I didn't know whether to give him an 88 or an 89. Because he's coming in at number 6, lads, you know I went for that 89 rated card. I do personally really believe the likes of Bale and someone else that's yet to come in this countdown are really closing in on the Messi's and the Ronaldo's of this world right now. I think that the, the Messi and Ronaldo impact on football is slowly, it's still incredible, but it's slowly dropping. And I do think that Bale is slowly catching him up. So I do think Bale is on the up. And his card, once again, would be absolutely amazing. We're talking 96 pace. His pace is obviously absolutely electric. Uh, 86 dribbling. 84 shooting, 83 passing, 83 physical and 64 defending and what a card that will be. Again, like I've said, I was very torn between 88 and 89 but I've been a little bit generous. I do think he deserves it. An incredible, incredible play. We showed that for Wales in the Euros once again and like I said, I truly believe he deserves that 89 rated card. But coming in for the last player in today's five, we have got Manuel Neuer. Of course, had another fantastic season for Bayern Munich. I'm really surprised that he didn't get in the team of the season actually but um, 90 was how he started the year. He's got his 91, 92 uh, informed cards. He's also got an international man of the match, an international team of the tournament as well as, as that team of the year card, taking him all the way up to a 96 of course. And um, it's a bit of a door run really compared to some of the ones we've had today because I think he's going to be remaining exactly the same. He is the best keeper in the world right now. The only one coming close in my mind is David De Gea who is still a little bit shy of Neuer's standards but um, I do think his card's going to stay exactly the same. The first 90 rated player on this countdown, and that does leave us on a bit of a cliffhanger as we're going into the final four in the final episode of this mini series, lads. But like I said at the start and throughout this video, once again, I'd love to hear your opinions, your thoughts, your feedback, and all these player ratings we're getting in every single episode. People debating in the comment section below, which I absolutely love. Let me know your thoughts, let me know what you'd change, and let me know if you some, think some of these players deserve some better or worse rated cards. But that is going to wrap up the penultimate episode of this mini-series. I hope you're still all enjoying it. I will speak to you all in the next episode of this, which will be going at the start of next week at some point, I imagine. So have a fantastic weekend, lads. Hope you all enjoy yourselves. I'll speak to you next time. Nidge out. Yo, he's Nidge, plays with big games and player reviews are getting insane. He entertains while he elevates. His video quality resonates on career mode. He got lots of vids uploading off and he's rocking it. He's got the confidence in all his commentaries. Videos range, they often vary. Got need for speed and a road to glory. Just watching vids and you know the story. The content is underrated. I'm understating, so don't ignore the like and subscribe button to support the channel that keeps running. It takes one second, like it's free. It costs nothing. Peace.